Good day, everyone. Welcome to one of our bite-sized videos of which the purpose is to bring you, the integrator, up to speed with some of the basic concepts surrounding the Flowgear integration experience, as well as take a brief dive into one of our popular use cases. We're going to start by exploring the screen in front of you, the Flowgear console, which is the very first thing you'll be greeted with after logging into Flowgear. The Flowgear console provides access to all the components relevant to your integrations. From here, you can navigate to spaces that facilitate the setup for different parts of the integration. The three primary spaces that I'd like to briefly touch on are the workflows, connections, and drop points. Workflows can be found by navigating to the workflow section over here. And workflows provide a canvas from which you can drag and drop connectors and tooling provided by the Flowgear platform and construct your integration according to your business rules. We will go more in depth around workflows once we start to explore the specific use case. Connections, which we can navigate to by clicking over here, are spaces with which you can provide credentials that allow you to authenticate and connect to the systems which you would like to integrate with. We can go ahead and click on the new button over here, and we can go ahead and select a particular connector to work with. And connect, choosing any one of the connectors we can see here within the connector section, such as ConnectWise Manage, you'll see there's a space in which you can plug in credentials that are relevant to that specific platform. You then have the option of providing credentials for different profiles, such as test and production, and you will be able to run your workflow or integration within that profile, which will then target that specific environment that you've set up. If you set up your credentials correctly, you can click on the play button over here, which if successful, will give you a green banner telling you that the test succeeded. Finally, we have the drop point section. The idea behind the drop points is that it is our solution to hybrid on-prem and cloud integrations. You can install the drop point agent onto your on-prem servers, which will allow us then to talk to those servers within the scope of what you allow us to do using the whitelisting features. This means that we can talk to your file systems, we can talk to your AD, or we can move data between CRMs and ERPs that are not exposed to the internet with the drop point. These three spaces are the most important aspects related to the integrations themselves within Flowgear. For a deeper dive into the elements that make up the Flowgear console, please see our bite-sized video focusing on navigating the Flowgear console. Next, we're going to take a deeper dive into workflows and nodes. To do this, we're going to navigate to the workflow section, which we have done by clicking on this workflow over here. And from there, we're going to open up a new workflow by clicking on the new button right over here, at which point we're given the option to name the workflow, which we can name it appropriately, and click on the OK button over here, at which point you are then greeted with the Flowgear Design Canvas, the purpose of which is to provide you with the space to drag and drop Flowgear tooling in a specific sequence and order to string it together and then form the basis of an integration from end to end. Now to start dropping the tooling onto the canvas, we're going to click this plus icon over here, which is going to open up a list of our nodes. All of these little blocks are what we consider nodes. And simply put, a node is a function or set of functions that have been encapsulated in a certain way that the most complex aspects of it have been obscured from you and only the parts that you have to interact with are exposed. Now within our nodes, we have distinct categories. And the first category you can see here are the connectors. The connectors are responsible for talking to the systems with which you would like to integrate. And so all of the complexity around authenticating and talking to these platforms is hidden behind the node. And again, only the most relevant aspects of the node are exposed to you. Triggers are nodes that allow you to determine how a workflow should kick off. So it gives you architectural freedom around when a workflow should run and how it should run. In other words, if you would like a workflow to run twice daily or every 15 minutes, or perhaps on receiving a particular email, triggers will facilitate that process. Processes are the nodes that are responsible for actually supplementing, transforming, and enriching the data sets that you need to work with. So when you receive data from system A and needs to be transformed to a different structure so that system B can ingest it, the processes are there to facilitate that functionality as well as implement further business rules that you may have necessary for your integration. And then finally, evaluators are the nodes that are going to have a look at the result of a transaction and allow you to kick off additional supporting logic within that workflow. In other words, should a transaction fail, does somebody need to be emailed? Does someone have to be informed in some way? Does a report have to be built? So, so on and so forth. These four categories encapsulate all the tools that Flowgear provides the integrator, allowing you to build both simple and complex integrations within the scope of a simplified experience. For this demo, we're going to be looking at the creation of service tickets in ConnectWise Manage, 
through data received from our enterprise API. By the end of the demo, you should be comfortable with our branded ConnectWise Managed Connector, as well as how to set up API endpoints for workflows in the Flowgear environment. To kick off the demo, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up a brand new workflow. After having navigated to the workflow section over here, you can then click on the new button over here to go ahead and open up a new workflow, which will give you the option to name your workflow appropriately. Once you're at that point, you're now agreed through the Flowgear design canvas, from where you can start dragging and dropping the functionality that you would like to add to the integration. First thing we're going to want to do is actually configure the endpoint for the ConnectWise node that we're going to be working with. So the primary sections we're going to work with are receiving the data in the form of an API call, and then we're going to pass that along to ConnectWise in the form of a service ticket. So the first thing we will do then is go and put a ConnectWise manage node onto the canvas. And now we're going to want to actually hook into the ConnectWise environment. And to do so, we're going to go ahead and choose a connection for this node, which we can find under ConnectWise Sandbox, which I've pre-set up. Let's go ahead and open that up and see what it looks like. And here you can see I have plugged in credentials for the test profile relevant to this environment that we want to work with. Um, the test and production profiles can both be filled in. So when you run your workflow, depending on what profile you run it on, it will use those specific credentials. We can go and click on the play button over here. And that's going to give us a green banner to tell us that we have successfully set up the connection to this environment. So now that we've comfortably done that, let's head back to our canvas to carry on with the integration. So the first thing you want to do now is have an understanding of what kind of data we're expected to pass along to ConnectWise. So after we've set up our connection, we can go to the options menu over here, say choose sample, and that's going to generate a bunch of samples that we can actually work with in the context of each one of these is an action that we can perform against the API. So we're going to look for something called post ticket, and you can see there are two, the service tickets and project tickets. We want to post a service ticket. And once you've clicked on that particular action, it's going to take care of a couple of things for us in the background such as the complexity around what endpoint to hit and how to hit it, and simply give us an example of what that request needs to look like, which we can see over here. We're going to use this request sample to map our structure from A to B at a later stage. We will not need all of those fields, so we can go ahead to the next step where we are going to then get data into the environment. Now, to do this, we have to turn this workflow into what is essentially an API endpoint. To do this, you first have to go to the settings over here. You will have set your domain previously on the site settings, in this case, demos at flowgear.net. And now we can go ahead and give this a binding of type post, provide a path, say rest v1 tickets. And because we're working within the test profile, we're going to go ahead and move this over to the test side of things as well and go ahead and save this. Now, this particular workflow is exposed to the internet or the web through that URL. The next thing we're going to want to do is provide a space for which the data can be ingested if it's invoked. So to do this, we go ahead back onto the canvas, look for something called a variable bar. And within the variable bar, we're going to add a custom property and use the drop down to pick something called the FG request body. That request body is where the data of the main payload will be coming through once we invoke this API. So we can go ahead and save what we have so far and move on to the next steps. The next thing we want to do is think about how the mapping is going to look for these two environments. So in this case, to do the mapping, we're going to have a look at something called a quick map node, which is our flagship transformation tool. And this tool will be responsible for transforming the data we get out of our request body and passing it along into the structure that's expected by ConnectWise. Now we can do this one of two ways. We can hook this particular request body up to something such as a formatter, which we can then save and run this by calling this particular API, which will give us a sample of that document we can work with and then we can carry on. Or in this case, because I already have a sample of the document, we can get rid of that step and go straight to mapping what we expect to see. And so I'm going to take that sample payload, plug it in over here, that's the, what we expect the third party or service to be providing us. So whether you're invoking this from something like Azure or some kind of alerting system, 
Um, they will have their own payload. In this case, we've mocked out a payload that we can expect to see quite similar to what you might find in the real world and use that as a sample. And we can hook that straight up to the source of the quick map. And then we're going to want to hook up our result to the request section of the ConnectWise integration. And once you've done this, we have visibility of both samples we're expected to work with. We can click on change view and we can see a visual representation of that structure from left to right. So here we have a very simple data set from data coming from our supposed alerting service. And on the right-hand side is what's expected to be passed along to the ConnectWise managed environment. We can begin by mapping in some of the basic stuff, such as the context being the summary and the ticket typing a service ticket. And you'll start to see that particular structure forming on the right-hand side there. And you'll notice that these particular fields are being passed through as arrays because the ConnectWise managed payload is representing them as such. So what we're going to do to get rid of that is use the first function in both of these to give us what we expect to see on the right-hand side. So we can start to see these two fields forming up. And now we're going to map through some of the other aspects, such as the board and the status and the company, as well as description and severity. Not all of these fields are mandatory. It depends entirely on how your system is set up. Um, but in most cases, there are a minimum number of mandatory fields. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, skip ahead and map those out for you. Now that we finalized the mapping, you'll see that I first of all used the first function to shape the structure of the data that we need, as well as hard coded some values such as the status ID and the board ID, which typically are things that are not going to change within the context of an integration like this. On the right hand side, we can start to see that payload form, which is going to be representative of what the ConnectWise environment is expecting from us. And so through this effort, we have not only very easily mapped structures from A to B through a visual experience, we've used some very easy to use um, uh, functions to go ahead and further enrich and supplement this data. Um, what you may have noticed is that these functions are based off of, of Excel. They're very similar to what Excel allows. So if you're looking for v, VLOOKUP, SUM, COUNT, any function like that that you may have be, be familiar with in the Excel environment, that is also within this environment, just to add an extra layer of a friendliness to this particular tool. So now that we're happy with that structure we have, we can go ahead and close this off and we can go ahead and link these up. So now that we have this particular workflow almost to completion, there's a few things we have to do past this point. One is we need to create an API key for this workflow. And so what we'll do first is we're going to head into the settings over here. We're going to copy this particular URL and plug it into the notes over here. And what we'll need to invoke this is an auth key. Now, this auth key should actually be provided through the header, but for the purposes of the demo, we're going to provide it through the URL. And now we're going to head to the API key section over here to go and generate an auth key. We can click on the new button, and we will have the option to create a token or a certificate-based key. In this case, we're going to stick with a token-based key. Let's just call this auth key. And then we're going to pick the particular workflow which you want to expose to that auth key, which will be the create tickets workflow. Give that a save. And now we have these keys available to us, which we have to save now as they will not be available to us later. Copy this, head back to the canvas, and we can complete that URL. Now, this URL is what you're essentially going to be passing along to whatever system is expected to call into Flow Gear. Um, obviously, uh, should the system support the ability to provide headers for authentication, then that would be the best way to go about it. In this case, we're going to keep it simple and do it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and use a tool called Postman off screen to call this URL. Um, but you can use it practically any tool that you are comfortable with to, to call these uh, REST based services. Actually, before I go ahead and run this, let's go ahead to the ConnectWise portal and have a look if we can find any tickets with a type demo. So I'm currently on the core board and I cannot find a ticket with the description of demo. So what I'm going to do now, head back to the canvas. And as I said, off screen, I'm gonna go ahead and run the postman transaction. And once that's complete, what I can go do is head back to the landing page over here. And what I'll see is that for this timestamp, there was a successful transaction where the kind of data that passed through was a payload that looked like this, where it was demo ticket, a particular service ticket, and then the rest of the, the data over here. 
So we did in fact receive that API call from the Postman transaction, and that has successfully moved on to this, to this ConnectWise environment. To see this in more detail, we can head off to the activity logs, search the most recent 20 of them, and we can see that transaction again here in more detail, which firstly, the data that we saw now is part of the quick map, quick map in this form, in which the quick map transformed the data into this structure over here. And then we passed that along to the ConnectWise environment where it responded with a unique ID for that particular ticket. And then obviously some of the other information related to that specific ticket over there. So if we head back to the portal now, we can refresh this search for the demo and we can see that there is in fact a ticket called demo ticket with a description of test ticket for the demo presentation. Heading back to the canvas, this would then encapsulate the experience around building a workflow which can receive an API call and then transforming that into a ticket which can be uploaded to ConnectWise. This particular integration is obviously not production ready. It only references some of the basic uh, aspects of an integration. You will want to include error handling and additional business logic within the solution. And to do so, you can find that within our list of connectors and tools, they will encapsulate all the functionality you need to add any additional business logic that's relevant to your requirements. Now that we've shown you how to build a workflow, if at any point you have to go back and see what happened in that workflow, you can navigate to the workflow logs over here. For more detailed information on the topics we explored today, or if you would like to explore more complex aspects of the platform, including architecture and best practices, please join us for our technical certification course hosted on udb.com. Also, go ahead and check out some of our other bite-sized videos for more common use cases and platform features. Also, please go ahead and visit our website where you can register for a free trial and complimentary proof of concept. Have a look at our unique pricing model or explore our list of over 200 pre-built connectors. Thank you very much for joining me for this short demo. Have a lovely day further.